Hey guys, welcome back to Eric Reacts with Season 6, Episode 1 of Game of Thrones. This is called The Red Woman, so this episode is most likely going to focus on Melisandre. Um, hopefully we'll get her trying to revive Jon. If I had to bet, I'd say he does get revived, but I'm not completely sure. She's at least going to give it a shot though, I feel like. But maybe we'll learn more about her and what she wants to do without Stannis. She's devoted herself to him for like four years now uh, with the guidance of the Lord of Light. So maybe she doesn't believe in her religion quite as much now. Um, but yeah, what does she do without Stannis? Um, and depending on where they go in the storyline with Jon, the show could feel very different. Um, but we'll see. A couple of other plot lines that I'm interested in. Arya, is she going to become like Daredevil or Toph from A Avatar The Last Airbender? Or will she get her sense of sight back but be better suited to be no one because she's learned to deal with blindness? Uh, hoping Sansa and Theon are okay. Hopefully they've continued to run after they jumped off that wall. Um, not forward to looking... Not forward to not looking forward to seeing what Ramsay tries to do to get them back or how he reacts. Uh, things are also coming to a head in Dorne. I hope Doran comes out on top, um, but it feels unlikely. If I was Alaria, I would strike before he even finds out about Marcella. Like, um, yeah, as soon as the ship took sail, I would have murdered Doran because things are going to come to a head. Uh, Cersei, so many things are, so many bad things are happening to her right now. I was saying how she might have become unhinged at the end of last season. Finding out about Marcella's death isn't going to help either. She'll be even more protective of Tommen now, which makes me worry about Marjorie. Still hoping she and Loras will be okay. Marjorie was going to be such a great queen. Um, she was a little flaunting it a little that she had the power over Cersei, but she cared about the everyday people, so it's disappointing that she's being wasted, stuck in a dungeon. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh, we're also going to see Dario and Jorah look for Daenerys, and we'll see Daenerys deal with the Dothraki. I don't know how long that's going to take, but... Uh, and then Tyrion and Varys ruling a marine should be a treat. Um, we've never seen them truly have all the power, and in this case they will, so it'll be fun to see how well they do. And finally, we haven't seen Bran for all of last season. I don't think we've seen Rickon in two or three seasons. Probably two. But uh, interested in seeing how their stories play out. Maybe we'll see them again this season. I'm hoping... <laughs> I mean, Bran, Bran, it feels like it's time It's time for his story to come back up. But uh, yeah, let's get started. Wake up, John. It's just a flesh wound. Walk it off. Start blinking. You're fine. Uh-oh. Melisandre. Let her in, let her in. She looks so broken. She's always been so confident about everything. I saw him in flames. Fighting at Winterfell. She's gonna think that the flames are lying to her, when in reality... Come on, come on. Revive. Speak the words. Murderer! Traitor! Oh. He's got some loyalty. He thrust a terrible choice upon us. And we made it. I say we do our best to take Thorn with us when we go. We need to fight. But we don't need to die. Not if we have help. Who is gonna help us? You're not the only ones who owe your lives to Jon Snow. The wildlings. Don't let anyone in. I'll be back as soon as I can. Let's go. She was 11 the first time I saw her. And you've been abusing her ever since? She smelled of dog. I like that. I wasn't much older, but everybody was already afraid of me. <laughs> Your pain will be paid for a thousand times over. I wish you could be here to watch. This is good meat. Feed her to the hounds. Your command of the cavalry was what impressive. What the frick? Thanks to you. Do you feel like a victor? Hmm. Do you think that burning wagons in the night and mowing down tired, outnumbered Baratheons is the same as facing a prepared and provisioned Lannister army? Bruce is horrible. No. He keeps the putting the carrot in front of him. You played your games with the heir to the Iron Islands, and now they're both gone. Let's hope the maces are right. 
And Lady Walder's carrying a boy. Ooh. Ramsay's gonna kill him for sure. Oh, you can hear the hounds in the background. God. This music is pretty epic. You'll f freeze. Oh, oh, thank God! It's the only way. This way is better. Go, 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 Sansa, go. Just, just go, go. Don't, don't, don't go in slowly. Just run, run, run. Oh, they're getting close. Are they getting louder, or is it just my imagination? Where are they running to? God, she's gonna, she's gonna freeze. Jeez, they can't. No. They still found. I'll know them away. No, I won't make sure that. John is Lord John Snow. He's dead though. He dead though. He dead though. Oh no no no! Damn it! I can't wait to see what part Ramsey cuts off you this time. <sighs> Damn it! Brian, come on, let's go, let's go. Pod's been training too, learning from one of the best swords people in Westeros. Theon, grab a sword. What happened to the dogs? How did she? What did she, I, I needed to see that again? You might want to two-hand that sword, considering you don't have a shield. Yep, right thing to do. Definitely the right thing to do. There we go. Oh yeah, you got to two-hand that sword. I told you. Uh... Theon Greyjoy. Kneel before her again. I offer my services once again. <laughs> I will shield your back and keep your counsel and give my life for yours if need be. <laughs> I swear it by the old gods and the new. <laughs> she gave, he nodded. She looked to Theon for counsel? That's pretty big. I pledge to ask no service of you that might bring you dishonor. I swear it by the old gods and the new. <laughs> oh, this is such Arise. a great moment. It's so emotional. It must be so emotional for her. A ship from Dawn has sailed into the harbor. Marcella. Nope. Well, yes, but she dead. She's gonna be mad at Tyrion for sending her away in the first place. What does Mama look like now? Has she started to bloat? Her yeah, lips peel back from her teeth. I think I'd rather be burned after this conversation. From her first breath, she was so sweet. I don't know where she came from. She was nothing like me. <laughs> no meanness, no jealousy, just good. I know. The witch told me years ago. The witch. She promised me three children. She promised me they'd die. See, it's fake. You don't believe that. Of course I do. At least she's not blaming it on Jamie. You told me yourself. Fuck fate, fuck everyone who isn't us. We're the only ones who matter, the only ones in this world. And everything they've taken from us, we're going to take back and more. Ooh. I was worried about Cersei being becoming monstrous, even more monstrous, but this could be a dark turn for Jamie. She looks really good for being I in a dungeon. I am the queen for... and I demand to see my brother. Sinners don't make demands. Except that Unella can be overzealous at times. So speak with her. Stop sending her in here, you My brother. Is it news about Marcella? Oh, damn, he didn't even get a chance to fight. Oh, boy. You don't know your own people. They're disgust for you. Elia Martel raped and murdered, and you did nothing. Your son is weak, just like you. And weak men will never rule Dorne again. <sighs> Should have had her killed. Why I he... told you I'm not hungry. We're not here to feed you. They're here to kill you. We're here to kill you. You want her to do it? Or me? You. Good. Smart boy. Why would you leave your back open? Yeah, that's... You're a greedy bitch, you know that? <laughs> wow. You walk as though the paving stones were your personal property. I used to steal from people like you when I was a boy. <laughs> it's a good thing you know. 
She thinks you want to eat her baby. <laughs> Does he have Valeria Kupegri? <laughs> oh my god. The have a harpy plan their attack in the fighting pits very carefully, which means they take orders from someone. And have you started looking for that someone? What? We won't be sailing to Westeros at any time soon. All their ships? They just happened to find the ring in this huge... Oh. Hm, Drogon. Signs of Drogon. Keep coming back. Why? You know why. I love her. Isn't it frustrating? Wanting someone who doesn't want you back. Oh, yeah, yeah, you would be able to. Oh, she would. he would definitely... St okay, if they rode around that much around the ring, then he'll, they'll find the ring. That makes sense. Okay. Oh. She's gonna have him killed, isn't she? Wow. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> okay. Yes. They don't give her any choice tonight. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, people aren't interfering with her beating up a blind girl. See you tomorrow. Is this training? Or is she just abusing her? I will grant amnesty to all brothers who throw down their arms before nightfall. And you, Sir Davos, I will allow you to travel south. We'll discuss amongst ourselves and come back to you with an answer. In my learned opinion, we open that door... And they'll slaughter us all. They want to come in. They're gonna come in. No, there's always the Red Woman. What's one redhead gonna do against 40 armed men? You haven't seen her do what I've seen her do. Make babies. Shadow babies. We haven't had a naked person all episode, have we? Is she always only wearing that... That one robe? I guess she her body does run hot. No pun intended. What? What? Alright guys, so I'm starting to put full episodes on Patreon with, with the footage, if you guys want to check that out. Right now, as of this recording, I have the first three seasons, and this episode will be, um, all of season six forward will be full of footage too. But onto the episode, Melisandre didn't even try to revive Jon. I was just like, come on, speak the words, try it at least. Uh, Davos actually takes Jon's side immediately, which is n nice. Um, it's a good thing he learned how to read or he wouldn't have understood the sign. He'd just be like, what's John's bleeding body doing out in the snow? That was a bad accent. Uh, I don't know if it went through his mind that Melisandre might be able to revive John. If he had s just stayed out of it, the Night's Watch probably would have just left him alone though, so I, I'm not completely sure why he did what he did. Um, but yeah, in this time after Stannis' death, Davos even turns to the Red Woman. He even sees her as an ally. Um, but yeah, Melisandre says she saw Jon fighting at Winterfell, so I think her visions have all been real. It's just that she, they don't always mean what she thinks they mean. Like, she saw Stannis fighting in the snow, that came true. She saw the ba Bolton banners burn. Um, that hasn't happened yet, but I think it will. And then, um, Jon will fight at Winterfell if he's able to get up and walk it off, so we'll see. Um, but right now she's having a crisis of faith because she thinks that her visions have been wrong. I think the Lord of Light, whatever he is, has been showing her visions to get her to be where she needs to be. If she didn't follow Stannis, she wouldn't be at the Wall now. Um, she wouldn't be able to revive Jon. I'm just trying to make up a reason to say that Jon won't stay dead, because I don't want him to be dead forever. Uh, but Ed sneaks off to get the Wildlings to save their own butts. Uh, enough of them are loyal to Tormund. Uh, enough of the Wildlings are loyal to Tormund, and Tormund considers Jon an ally. And they also saw Jon put his life on the line to save them. So, Castle Black will fall to the Wildlings. 
I hope one one steps on Alistair. Honestly, you know that moment in the first fight between Vegeta and Goku, and like Vegeta's a great ape and just like stomps on Goku's legs. Yeah, I need that to happen with Alistair and one one. Um, it seems like there were people outside of the room that were still loyal to John. Um, that guy was calling Alistair a traitor, but he kind of piped down after he realized, yeah, like John's dead. Like there's nothing we can really do about it. It sucks it had to go down that way though. And uh, we had Ramsey grieving for Miranda. Odd to see him actually emotional about something. It's been a good. Th it's been a theme throughout the series. Like we can't help who we love. That doesn't mean that there aren't good and bad reasons to love somebody though. Uh, let's be together because we love torturing people together is not a good reason. <laughs> and to feed her to the dog she looked after all her life. Uh, this is a horrible. That is a horrible way to go. Um, meanwhile, Roos is constantly dangling that carrot in front of Ramsay, like, Oh, I need my, I need your help, my son, to keep Winterfell from being taken from our family. And then after he succeeds, you think that was the real fight? We need to keep Winterfell from being taken by the Lannisters. So Roos is, Roos is right a little bit, like, Ramsay played his games with Sansa and Theon, and now they're both gone. But, yeah, he's just... Dangling that carrot in front of Ramsay, trying to get him to do what he wants. Uh, I really want to see both of their sadism be their undoing, and I feel like that's starting a little bit with um, what he said about what Roos said about Ramsay playing games with Sansa and Theon. But he's playing Ra he's playing his own games with uh, Ramsay too, so we'll see. Uh, Theon, Theon, and Sansa are on the run from Winterfell, and Ramsay's dogs um, chasing them down. Theon really saved her. Honestly, he put her before himself. Helping her through the water, giving himself up and saying that she was already dead. I was scared, a little scared in that moment that they were going to be going back to Winterfell, but Brienne and Pod show up at the last second. Pod's been training under her for a while and isn't completely useless in a battle, which is nice to see. But uh, Brienne takes out so many and in so many people and in so many impressive ways. She straight up like just jumps and skewers someone who's riding towards her on horseback. Uh, that whole sequence. Though I was just like, Theon, grab a sword, and he finally does. Um, yeah, we talked about the biggest part of his identity, biggest parts of his identity before sex and archery being taken away from him, uh, because his fingers flayed and he's been castrated, so he'll have to find something new now that he's alive again, um, and himself again. But the hounds that were tracking Sansa and Theon just like magic mysteriously disappeared when Brienne showed up. Um, not sure where they went. Maybe they know what she did to Sandor, also the hound, and they were just like, nope, we're out. Um, but yeah, that scene where Brienne pledges herself to Sansa again is so powerful. I'm guessing it was the combination of like Sansa finally getting free and Brienne finally finding someone worthy she can serve. I teared up for sure, and Sansa, um, yeah, she she fi finally has someone she can trust again. Um, two people, I guess, because she trusts Theon. Uh, she looked to she looked for his approval before she agreed to Brienne's uh, service, which is which is a big deal. I feel like. And uh, I'm a little surprised we didn't see Tom in this episode. I thought for sure we'd see him and Cersei's reunion. Uh, I'm I'm worried he's not doing well still. Uh, I don't want to see Cersei happy, but I wanted to see Tommen have some relief from his depression. Like any good news, any reprieve would have been would have been nice for him. Instead, we see Cersei find out Marcella is dead. Um, that might that might be hard on Tommen too. So, yeah, I feel like Cersei is definitely going to blame, blame Tyrion for this. And honestly, she'd be a little justified. Like, this wouldn't have happened if Tyrion hadn't sent her to Dorne. Though, to be fair, Dorne wouldn't have turned against Marcella if she hadn't insisted on having Tyrion killed and forcing a trial by combat. Also wouldn't have happened if Tywin didn't have the mountain kill and rape Elia Martell. But she's not going to see it. But Cersei's not going to see it that way. Um, but at the very least, I'm pleasantly surprised that she wasn't mad at Jamie for failing to protect Marcella. Though he does deserve a little bit of blame after letting Ilaria anywhere close to Marcella. Like, I, I'm still not over how dumb that was. But uh, Jamie swears revenge on everything and everyone. I have to imagine he disapproves of what Cersei did to Tommen by imprisoning Loras and Marjorie, though. And uh, they didn't even talk about her Cersei's time in the dungeon either. But yeah, Cersei talks about how she imagined her mother rotting, and after that conversation, I feel like I want to be cremated now. And uh, she was talking about how good Marcella was, and is oddly self-aware in that moment, saying Marcella wasn't like her with her meanness and jealousy. She thought if she could create someone like Marcella, she might not be a monster herself. And uh, it'd be nice if this was a turn um, 
to be like have her take uh, after her daughter a little, but I severely doubt that. Um, but yeah, Alaria and the Sand Snakes take Dorne and kill Duran and Tristane. Gives the Lannisters another enemy to deal with. Uh, Arya Hoda just got taken out with a single knife to the back. Really? That that thing was like a three inch blade. That really kills a man with that much muscle. I don't buy that. Um, but yeah, I like I said in my reaction, I'm a little afraid that Jaime might be a little become a little ruthless himself. I don't want to see that side of him. I don't want to see that side of him develop like that. Uh, anyway, Marjorie is still in the cell. It looks like she's being treated be better than Cersei was at the very least. She asks the High Sparrow where her brother is, and it made me think of a line from Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Uh, I was expecting the High Sparrow to be like, I'll tell you where he's not. Safe. Um, Varys and Tyrion are observing the city, trying to figure out how to rule it. Uh, Tyrion tells the woman he wants to eat her baby. <laughs> oh, so horrible. Oh, his Valyrian is really bad. <laughs> he should just stop. He should just stop. At least he didn't say, I don't want to eat your baby's nostrils. Uh, but the people of Marine believe Daenerys has abandoned them. The, um, and Tyrion remarks that those who worship the Lord of Light are a problem, which is interesting. Uh, but the Sons of the Harpy burn all of the Daenerys' ships. Uh, interesting move. Is that meant to stop her from going to Westeros? I feel like they want her to leave so they can have Essos to themselves. And yes, I know it's pronounced Essos now and not Asos. Uh, I like that the show actually ha gave a good explanation for how Dario and Jorah found the ring Daenerys left behind. Um, it's a little convenient, but at least they didn't just happen to find it in a sea of grass while they were on horseback. And I guess Daenerys knew that they were going to ride around, like, ride around her multiple times and destroy the grass. So it, made, it, it makes more sense in retrospect. Uh, but da Daenerys is brought before a call. She pretends she doesn't know the Dothraki tongue for a bit but eventually uses it to her advantage. Um, but she says she won't have any children until the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. I'm still not sure where she got that idea. I thought her first child was only payment for Drogo's life. I didn't think that it meant she would have no children f forever. Um, but yeah, they say they won't rape her because she's the widow of Khal Drogo. Khal Drogo. Uh, I wonder if that means that Dara will be in trouble with the Dothraki for having sex with her. But of course, like even modern cultures or any culture, they only choose not to rape her because she was married to a leader of theirs. Like they have more respect for dead men than they than any woman. And of course, they also force her to go to Ve Va. I didn't hear how it's pronounced. Vase, Vice, Doth Dothrak, Va. Um, it's the place where all the widows of the calls reside. Um, but yeah, uh, there were some funny lines in the, the Dothraki had. But anyway, um. Arya seems to be picking up things without her sight a little bit. You can see her overhearing chatter on the streets. And the waif actually comes up to her to beat her up. Um, seems like this is going to happen every day. <laughs> uh, when she first throws the stick at Arya, I thought that she heard it or felt it coming before it arrived um, and caught it. But upon editing, it's clear that she didn't. It like, hit her arms first and then she like flinched. So I don't know if this is part of her training, uh, this fighting. I feel like it is, but I could be wrong. Uh, maybe in a few days, she'll catch the stick when it's thrown at her. Um, actually, I'm not sure if the wave took it back. But yeah, season 6 will probably end with her fighting crime in Hell's Kitchen. That's going to be the ultimate crossover. Um, Alistair tries to negotiate with the people locked in the room with John's body. I'm not sure why he doesn't just burn the place down. Uh, but Davos is right, he has no thoughts about sparing any of them. And we see Melisandre. I had no idea her powers were kept her looking so young. Um... We see her necklace glow again, um, but I only remember it glowing once before when she was drinking the poison Stannis' maester gave her, but I'm guessing I missed a couple more times. Like, interestingly, we've seen her without the necklace um, before when Solis walked in on her bathing, and yet she was still in her younger form, so I feel like the necklace doesn't act as the shroud or the illusion, the power of, it's not the source of the illusion, um, but maybe it's acts like sort of a switch, like taking it off doesn't affect her form, but instead she uses the necklace's power to deactivate the illusion. Um, but if you think of her illusion as um, as a younger woman, as clothes, this is the first time we've, we're seeing Melisandre truly naked. And what were the Dothraki saying just a few minutes before? Seeing a woman naked for the first time is one of the top five greatest things in life. 
Uh, sure, I'm sure that's not what... I'm not sure this... I'm sure this isn't what they were thinking about. But uh, there needs to be, like, a parody BuzzFeed account um, for articles for game Game of Thrones. Just, like, top five things that Dothraki can experience in their lives. Uh, also, they were joking about grandmothers with white hair. So, it's all connected. Um, but yeah, I get emotional pretty easily because I identify with these characters and get attached to them. But any episode that makes me cry, I need to give at least a four or two. So, yeah, four, four direwolves for this episode. Very solid start to the season. And uh, looking forward to what happens next. But everyone, thank you so much. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. If you want to watch the next three episodes right now, make sure to check out the early access option on Patreon in the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye, friends.